We want to continue our journey in Luke's Gospel. And Luke chapter 9, verses 23 to 25, and then picking up at verse 57. Luke 9, 23. Then Jesus said to them all, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. What does it profit them if they gain the whole world, but lose or forfeit themselves? Verse 57, as they were going along the road, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another, Jesus said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? Maybe an evaluation, maybe a soul-searching question for us today is, what am I following? What am I pursuing with the best that I have? With the core of my being, with my heart, what do I long for? What is it that I am in earnest pursuit of? I do believe that everybody on any given day is pursuing something. It may be worth pausing. I was going to say each day, but really many times throughout the day to pause to say, what is it I am seeking or searching in this action, in this moment, at this time, with this behavior? What is it I long for? What is it I am chasing after? Jesus said to them all, I do believe this message and this word is for each and every one. If any want to become my followers, what an opportunity to become a follower of Jesus. To have that which you pursue in life to be the one and only Son of God, the Messiah, the Anointed. If any want to, what do you want? Again, what do you desire? If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. There is a denying of self that takes place in those who earnestly seek to follow Jesus. Deny self of that which will merely be self-serving to deny self of that which is merely for the purpose of getting myself ahead. Deny self in regards to pursuing that which will primarily benefit me and me uh, mostly or me solely. To deny self for the sake of something which is bigger and greater than self. And in this case, the kingdom of God. And in serving the kingdom of God above all else, indirectly or actually quite directly, we also become the servant of others. So to follow Jesus is to remove ourselves from the center position. To remove ourselves from the throne to remove ourselves from the position of receiving that which is always and only best for me. If any want to become my followers, it's going to cost something. 
let them deny themselves. And then Jesus makes this even more explicit and more graphic and take up their cross. A cross was an instrument of defeat, of shame, of brokenness, of pain, of rejection. To take up want to take up one's cross is to step outside of the comforts that this world has to offer. To take up one's cross is to be in opposition to the ways of a broken world to the point that the broken world finds you in contempt. To take up one's cross is definitely to deny oneself for the sake of something bigger and something better. To take up one's cross is to lay one's life down for the purposes of the kingdom of God. It is to cease entirely from chasing after the ways of this world and to pursue wholeheartedly the things of God to the point of laying down our very lives. And in this image and in this scripture, Jesus says to take up their cross daily. And so Jesus doesn't have the image or the thought here that these followers are going to be literally crucified or literally put to death. But live each day of your life in opposition to that which is in opposition to the kingdom of God. Live each day of your life in contempt in the eyes of this world which is broken. This world which is not following Jesus. This world which does not desire the things of God, but desires rather the things of man. Let that world hold you in contempt because you are living for a different kingdom. And live for this other kingdom every day of your life. And follow me. This is what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus. For those who want to save their life, those who choose to go along with that which is against God, those who choose to live their lives comfortably in a broken world, those who choose to live in accordance with the ways of self and the ways of degradation and the ways of sin, Will in the end have nothing left. They will lose their life. But those who lose their life for my sake will save it. Those who are willing to go against the tide. Those who are willing to proclaim peace when there is no peace. Those who are willing to love in a world of hate. Those who are willing to be silent in the midst of gossip. Those who are willing to bind up the broken instead of casting them aside. Those who are willing to follow Jesus in this world and live their lives for the sake of others as Jesus did. Those who are willing to give their lives away for the sake of love displayed in and through Christ will actually gain life, full life eternal life. They will know God. This is what we are called to. For what does it profit one if they gain the whole world but lose or forfeit themselves? We weren't made to gain the whole world. We weren't made to grow in riches and health and possessions, and position, and image. We weren't made to grow in the ways of the world, a broken, fallen world. We were meant to grow into the image of God. We were meant to grow into the likeness of Christ and give ourselves to a broken world in love and in care, in hope, of making the world a better place in and through the power of Christ in us and the work of the Spirit among us. 
as they were going along the road in verse 57, uh, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. I think sometimes we have maybe this thought within ourselves, I will follow, I will follow. There's nothing more important to my life than Jesus. Wherever he leads me, I will go. But Jesus gives a warning in verse 58. He says, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. I will follow you wherever you go. We read or read a little earlier in Luke uh, chapter 9 that Jesus has at this point turned his head toward Jerusalem. Jesus is heading towards his literal cross, the cross on which he will die. Jesus is headed to give his life for the sake of the world. I will follow you wherever you go. Will you take up your cross? Will you potentially go without comforts that this world can afford for the sake of showing people another world, another kingdom, another way? Jesus had nowhere to call his own. Are we willing to let go of that or some of that which we call our own, that which we have acquired and possessed, in order to make room in our lives for more of the kingdom of God, for more of God. To follow Jesus is most likely going to cost, let me take the most likely out of there. <laughs> to follow Jesus is going to cost us something in the realm of this world. It will involve sacrifice. To another he said, Follow me, and it's interesting here, the previous case, somebody is saying to Jesus, I will follow. And in what follows uh, this verse, somebody says, let me follow. But here Jesus is calling someone to follow. And here Jesus said to one, follow me. But this one whom Jesus called, uh, it looks like perhaps for a specific purpose, said to Jesus, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Follow me. I don't know if you've ever heard Jesus give you a specific call for a specific task at a specific time. Follow me. Follow me. And you're thinking, I will, but first, yes, Lord, but first, let me go and take care of something that needs taken care of. And in this case, the one called said, let me first go and bury my father. Uh, there's a couple of ways that this could be taken. One is that uh, this man's father is still living but elderly. Let me go and spend the last days with my father until he passes uh, and burial and then I will come follow. Or it could very well be that this man's father has already passed and the burial needs to take place, which was an important rite uh, within the Jewish faith. Let me go and tend to this deed which needs to be done. And Jesus says, interestingly, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Let those without a call, specific call upon their life, go and bury your father. You go and proclaim the kingdom of God. There might be some good things that you can do in and with and through your life, but you know God has called you to something else. You know that God has called you to something specific. And you say, I, yes, Lord, I will follow that call, but first there's some other things, good things, that I want to take care of. If you have a specific word from the Lord to go and to do something, let others, without your call, take care of that and go follow the Lord. And then in verse 60, we have another 
uh, who is coming to Jesus and said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. I think of the account of Elijah and Elisha in the passing on of that mantle, and the words are there as well. I will take up this mantle, but let me first go and say farewell to those at home. But Jesus gives this reply. No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. What takes precedence in your life? What is it you desire above all else? What is it you long for beyond anything else? Is it Jesus? And if so, it does not mean that we need to leave our families. It does not mean we need to leave our work. It does not mean we need to uh, discard everything else in our life. But what it does mean is this. Jesus needs to be at the center. Jesus needs to be on the throne of our hearts. Jesus needs to be what our life is about. Jesus needs to be what we pursue above all else. And if he gives a specific call that interferes with something else good in your life, Follow his call, follow his word, follow the spirit that God has given you. Lord Jesus, help us to deny ourselves and take up our cross daily and follow you. To your praise and your glory we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.